Okay, hello everybody. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anexis. I am a blind author, content creator, and freelancer. And uh, welcome to today's video, which is late. I am sorry. Again, I'm not on time uh, again with my review. Also very, very sorry. But hey, I'm making it at the tail end of February, so I'm going to count it. Um, <laughs> and it's great. Uh, so this is the review for The Perfect Date by Naima Simone. This is the last book in the uh, Billionaires of Boston series. And I am excited to talk about that with you today. I have, in I have an interesting review plus some things, that, some uh, other things at the end. Um, so a couple of housekeeping things though before we get into the review. If you enjoy what I do here uh, and want to support me, first of all, consider subscribing and uh, turning on notifications so you're aware of when I upload videos. Remember that I am uploading shorts every day, at least for the time being, since it's still working out. So you definitely get content from me daily with shorts. Uh, long form videos will take more time for me, but especially because I'm in school uh, and I'm currently in my semester, uh, in the middle of my semester. So, but you do get daily content from me with shorts. Um, if you want to see like the, 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 if you ever, if, um, if that's an, something that interests you, um, you can also, um, subscribe to my blog, the description, it, it, it'll be in the description and, uh, yeah, uh, that's one way to do that. And if you want to support me financially, you can check out my Kofi where you can check out my debut book. It's available in my bookshop there, uh, both the ebook and the audiobook format. It's also available in other retailers like Apple, Barnes and Noble, and Kobo. Um, and um, I'm also also uh, a, I also offer services such as beta reading, audio description, critiques, and um, poetry writing for you. So um, I hope that you uh, enjoy those. If you're interested in those services, they are available on Kofi, and you can also just um donate to me in there uh i would appreciate i would appreciate any support at all um on any of the avenues i also want to make a quick announcement that i will be soon in the community post announcing a sale for uh my book it will be a 99 cent sale for the ebook and 3.99 i think for the audiobook it will be a 50 percent off um so currently the way that's going to be working is that the uh basically what's going to happen is that right now uh smashwords is going to be running a sale it'll be read an ebook week um and i will put the link there as well um but i also will be running a sale for that same week on my shop unfortunately i cannot schedule it the same way i did for smashwords where it just kind of it's a site-wide promotion so my book is there but i can i will when i have it up on sunday uh, which is supposed to be that day. I may have it up a day earlier though on my site. I don't know yet. I will, I will, I will link everything when I have everything up for you. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for those announcements on the community tab. And without further ado, here is my review of the perfect. Uh, um, uh, wait, is it the perfect date? Yeah, the perfect date. Yeah, the perfect date by Naima Simone. I'm sorry, I am absolutely forgetting the title. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the review, and I will see you on the other side. All right, we finally made it. This is the last romance book of February. The last month where I'm gonna be the last uh, like of that those that special blocked out month just for romance for y'all. This is the last one. Don't worry though, romance will not be leaving my channel. In fact. I am currently reading most likely the next romance I'll be reviewing probably in a couple of weeks. So it's okay. Romance will not be leaving, but this is the last romance review for February in that special Valentine's Day, Valentine's Month that I decided to do where I just reviewed romance. And we also finally reached the last book that I needed to read to complete the Billionaires of Boston uh series and we've made it and we also made it to oh, I feel like the most annoying of the books we'll talk why I've got opinions 
as you can see from the title. Uh, all right, so here's the synopsis for this book, for The Perfect Fake Date. Here's the synopsis. It's just a kiss, Eve. I'm only holding up my end of the bargain. As the secret son of, wait, as the secret son of Boston's wealthiest, most cold-hearted billionaire, Keenan Rhodes knows that everyone is watching him when he stakes his claim, his family claim, his family claim. Proving himself won't be easy and he needs backup. So Keenan makes a deal with his best friend, lingerie designer Eve Burke. She'll help him professionally and he'll help Eve catch his brother's eye. But soon Keenan wants his gorgeous best friend for himself, crossing the line between fake dates and something dangerously irresistible. All right, let's talk about a bit of deceptive synopsis here um or at least i consider it slightly deceptive so um first of all he has always keenan has always wanted his best friend it's very it's very very much told to us in the book that he has been in love with her for like 15 years so i wouldn't say that he starts wanting her he has always wanted to do that he kind of just started this in order to let her go but it just didn't happen um so uh yeah i find that to be slightly deceptive in the synopsis but okay that's me um and uh yeah that's it that's what i that's about so the pros as usual is good right the pros is good and it kind of works it is written in um it's written in in both it the story itself is told in both keenan and eve's point of view so again they don't necessarily get equal page time but they get enough page time so that's fine and there the pacing things definitely happen very quickly I'm pretty sure there are time skips, but unlike, in, I know there are time skips actually, but unlike in um, the last book, Secrets of a One Night Stand, they are, they're not necessarily mentioned how much time has truly passed uh, all the time. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And because of that, it, I have a, I'm not sure how much, how much time actually passed in this book's timeline. Um, so yeah that's a thing so they so that's a that's eh, it happens pretty quickly unlike it doesn't necessarily it does feel like there is like hints of insta love in this though and i hate insta love there are hints of insta love here specifically in eve's part because the way that she kind of talks about it is that she had a crush on him when she was a teenager and then it went away. It was like a phase for her. And then she just started having a crush on um, Keenan's brother, Gavin, who she had a crush on for a while and seems to have always wanted. And then for some reason, she somehow started falling for her best friend. And then for most of the books, she's like, no, I'm not going to think about it. I, it's Keenan that I want. or whatever. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's Gavin that I want or whatever. And she kind of starts looking at it like that. And then she starts falling for him a little bit, a lot. And then at some point she's like, I've been in love with him. I'm in love with him and I've been in love with him for a while. And I'm like, since when? Like, since when? Since when? It really felt like Eve was leading both men on. So I found Eve to be unlikable as a character. But I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But like, oh God. Um, so that's kind of like how it was written. But like... The themes in the book were, it's worked pretty well. It, it's explored okay. Listen, category romance has a trend not to, it has a trend where it doesn't fully explore themes that well, honestly. It, it, it's like, it, it, it adds, category romance has this, this trend of adding, um, of adding, uh, like, pretty hard themes to explore and then not giving them the page time to do it um to actually explore those feelings and to 
to actually take some time to to really do that so it has the uh that's like the, the thing the trend i'm seeing in a bunch of category romans that I've, re I've, I've read like these things are added but they're like they a lot of the time it feels like they're just added for just because the story needs a conflict and uh, and I don't necessarily like that it they that stuff deserves better and I just don't know no there's there's no need for that like there is no need for that so um so that is something that I just don't I don't I don't find that I I, I, I like I really dislike that um, so that is a thing. It's like ah, oh, it's to explore, but not always. Like the one, the one theme that was explored somewhat well was Keenan's need to prove himself, and then, uh, Eve, again comes off really unlikable as a character. Really, she comes off really unlikable as a character. Like she's the kind of character I really. Ha I don't like as her as a character. I barely liked her as a romantic partner for, um, for for Keenan because Keenan was an interesting guy, but Eve, no. So that's my that's that. The again characters are fine for the most part. Keenan was my favorite. I think Eve comes off unlikable, like I said, and I think she ends up being like. I think she's too, she ends up leading both men on and for some reason ends up choosing her best friend. It, it really does feel like he, like, so one of the things that uh, Keenan fears in the story is, and he's, and he hates, is that a lot of the time he is second, second to his brother, both for his parents and even in Eve's life because her, his brother had her heart or whatever. And like, and had her love or whatever and he's just and she's just like and he and he's like i don't want to be put second like i want to be able to prove that i am good on my own but without being like second and i think that's it, it was it was explored well but honestly with eve he absolutely he absolutely feels like the second choice and it totally doesn't feel like she like she chose him right away. It feels more like she her realization feels weird. Like it feels like she really did choose him, um, choose him second. Like it absolutely feels that way. It feels like she totally just like, um, because she couldn't have because she like, uh, because for one reason or another this happened and he she supposedly liked him. Uh, or felt for him uh or had feelings for him supposedly i have a hard time believing that truth be told she feels like she really chose him second and put him second it really feels like he was more of a second choice than anything else and uh and and i dislike that but also let's talk about why this title is the way it is and why i said the miscommunication trope can be really annoying this entire story is miscommunication problems could have been solved if they simply talked to each other oh my goodness it was so bad now okay look let's talk about the miscommunication drop here and i want to just talk about i've said it before and i've said it before and i've said it and i'll say it again tropes are not bad the only thing that's bad is execution tropes are a frame for the story to fall into and of sorts like the story can follow this kind of framework of this trope uh same thing for uh like archetypes archetypes are uh frameworks for characters and tropes are more like flirt frameworks for stories and 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 stuff like that they are not bad they're tools the only thing that's bad is the execution of these archetypes and these tropes miscommunication as a trope is not bad i actually can enjoy a miscommunication trope here and there when done in a way that i think makes sense this one does not it also talks about i'm also going to talk about why friends to lovers is just kind of i don't hate this trope but i also in the books i have read 
I find it really annoying. Um, but I like this trope, like in concept. Uh, but let me explain, right? So the problem with miscommunication trope, with a miscommunication trope is that it is too plot convenient. And um, it can work out really well. The miscommunication trope can work out really, really, really well. Like in The Kiss Quotient. The Kiss Quotient is a really good example of how the miscommunication trope can be done really well. Because in The Kiss Quotient, the miscommunication when it comes to them makes sense. Stella has a very hard time sometimes understanding certain things and so she misinterprets them and she maybe has a really hard time uh, with some things and so she just like maybe some of the challenges that she has do come with her disability so her miscommunication makes sense uh, and stuff like that so the miscommunication trope there makes sense but in this book it just feels like a plot convenient way to keep the characters apart throughout the entire story that is what you get miscommunication galore i know that there are people who hate the miscommunication trope i'm not one of them i think it can work but you need to make it make sense and this story did not do that this story uses communication miscommunication as a very plot convenient way to keep the characters apart in and this is where I think the friends to lovers conversation comes in. I think in concept, friends to lovers is a really cute trope. But I have to wonder, if you have such a close relationship with your friend and you start liking them. Okay, I get it that you wouldn't, you don't want them to ruin, you don't want to ruin your friendship or whatever. But if you have such a close relationship with your friend, why would you have such bad communication with your friend? Where it's like... Why would you have such bad communication where you're not even able to talk to them about your feelings? Do you really, are you really that close if you have that bad communication? Because this whole thing is the excuses, I don't want to ruin my own friendship. I don't know what's going to happen with our friendship. If you have good communication skills, that can, you guys can figure that out. I'm sure about that. But it's like, it's just used. I did, there that was a thing too for his until midnight where it's like, these two knew each other for a while and then they just don't communicate because I don't want to ruin the friendship. Like you never, it's like, oh my God, it's so bad. Like Eve can be understood in this book. I find Eve unlikable, right? But one of the things that can be understood by Eve, that why she probably wouldn't pursue Keenan is, um, you haven't shown an interest in me. And I'm like, yeah, he hasn't shown an interest in you. There's no reason. I, I can understand why you wouldn't pursue him. I wouldn't pursue him. So there's like that thing where it's like, um, I get it. But at the same time, you should be able, if you're close enough to your friend and you have these feelings, it makes sense that you would communicate with your friend and that you would, to me at least it does, and that you wouldn't have such a bad communication skills such bad communication skills instead miscommunication feels here like it's just like it feels ah it just doesn't feel like it makes sense instead it just feels like you're using it for no reason it feels it feels added as really plot convenient conflict it's so annoying reading how these characters quote unquote like each other and all you get is just like but i don't want to ruin the Ship and I don't and I don't I don't want to lose her as a friend. I thought you had you were you've been friends for a while. Last I checked, best friends. Make it make sense. If you're going to use miscommunication trope, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you with a passion. Make it make sense. I'm begging you because this does not make sense. It truly does not. It does not make sense. And I, I, I just, I don't understand what the point of the miscommunication trope is if you're not going to make it make sense. And if it's just going to be there for plot convenient crap. It's very annoying. Um, it is a very annoying thing. 
it just it's just there another thing that highly irritated me about this romance besides the miscommunication trope and the ugh, i'm so annoyed by it um and the way like the the way the french lovers seems to be like portrayed because they're just they just have i don't get how they're friends because they just have such bad communication apparently about their own grown-up lives please just talk but like um another thing that i find slightly annoying I mentioned it before, I think, one of my vlogs, that romance makes me really hate describing. I have, I, I think this, I, I've seen it in a lot of romance books. I see it particularly more. I see it more in contemporary romance. I'm, I do think this, this thing is in fantasy romance, but it's like, I think in fantasy romance, you can A, get away with more things that I think contemporary is like, just feels weird so i think you can get away with more things in fantasy romance because it's fantasy and you can basically you can basically do a almost anything you can basically do anything in fantasy because it's fantasy but also b um i haven't noticed it as much but i know it exists um and it's not as bad but in contemporary romance i see it more and it's just so so very annoying so very annoying but the thing is that i find that the way that men are written in romance usually with the female gaze because most of the time romance is written by women at least the ones i read seem to be written by women uh in particularly written in the female gaze it's really weird they're written the male characters are written like even like even the female characters but mostly the male characters mostly the male characters are written like um like uncontrolled like uncontrolled like men who cannot control their sex needs and that is very annoying because they're basically like they're basically like sex dolls or something i don't understand i don't i don't know how better describe it they're written in a way that it's like they can't control certain things they're written almost like um beasts and animals and there is even a part in this book where the, the where it's really stated outright where she uh where keenan is describing men and she and he's like we are we're like uh um you know we're like uh beasts we're, we're animals we uh we are kind of like the truth is that um we're kind of like predators but the truth is that uh, we're your prey and we enjoy it so it's like they're written in a way that's almost heavily stereotyped to to fit this this whatever the the the, the plot is so men feel uh it feels almost insulting in a, in a certain way i noticed it a little bit more in this book in the other billionaires of boston series books it's not as bad but in this book specifically, it is horrible. It is slight. It's very, very noticeable how how the men are written and how it's like the the way that she writes them just feels or the way that they're written a lot. I've seen a lot of contemporary romance, but I've definitely noticed it in this one specifically. Like they feel so, they feel very, um, they feel so stereotyped and a bit and very insulting. Honestly, I think, um. If you're a guy in my comment section and you've read this book, can you, or, re or read romance written by women, can you let me know what you think about it, about this? Because I find that, I mean, I write, of course, I do write male characters, and uh, although I don't write them like this, I don't write descriptions the way that they're, that it's written here. Uh, I also don't find myself writing in a male's point of view, describing a woman's breasts and her body. So like, <laughs> I don't do that. And it's because it's really annoying. It's just, it's really annoying to read. But also it just feels, it just, it just feels insulting, truth be told. Like I love, I do love romance, I do. But this is one of the things that bothers me about the genre in general. Um... It does bother me about the genre and it's one of the things that bothers me and it's one of the things that i'm like this one makes me hate descriptions in general descriptions like this make me like despise writing a description <laughs> so that is one of those things i find kind of annoying it's very noticeable the way she starts they, they're written like this 
and I'm just like I'm a little irritated by it I don't know I, I, I find it really annoying I went on an entire rant um I went like, on a really long rant of this in a vlog um that I recently recorded and have to edit when I get there but it's just it's just I can't I don't like it I really didn't enjoy that that part um it feels kind of stereotyped overall this is my least favorite of all the billionaires of Boston series in that should in that's something to be said because I thought my least favorite was going to be secrets of a one night stand since it is a pregnancy romance like genuinely I thought that was gonna be my least favorite and that's not the case um it's like this this one's just my least favorite I I gave it three stars and I'm gonna give you a ranking of my favorites since I finished the Billionaires of Boston series here is my 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 uh my ranking from uh first to last Black Sheep Bargain, Vows and Name Only, Secrets of a One Night Stand, and finally The Perfect Fake Date. This book was ter this book was not terrible, but it was like ugh. Uh, it was just so compared to the others, this book was so disappointing. It was like it was so disappointing. I hate that I'm ending February like this for you guys. This valent for that for that like that Valentine's Day month, but like Compared to the others, this book was so disappointing. It was just so, like, it it did not, it did not do it. It didn't do it. And and it, it really brings to light why people hate the miscommunication trope so much. It's just, it's too much. It's too much. It truly is too much. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts on this book and on the questions I asked, or on the question I asked about, like, romance uh especially men written by the female gaze and uh and through the female gaze and even women sometimes written through the female gaze is just weird too so let me know what you think um so i yeah just just let me know i'm curious okay so i know we're about to end but before we do i want to talk about a couple of uh two things uh well three things that i kind of want to go in a little bit more detail on and just give i kind of already give my opinions but i just want to kind of give opinions now also upon reflection and just upon just just because okay so let's talk about unlikable characters really quickly so i did say that eve to me became unlikable because of the way that she was leading on both men um and i still agree i still think that she was an unlikable character but i do want to say that unlikable characters is not a bad thing i i mean i i'm pretty sure that i have read uh, characters that were unlikable and i still found it interesting actually wait no never mind i know of care i know of a story that i have consumed where characters were were very much unlikable or at least one character was and that is death note where light is technically an unlikable character you respect him but he is unlikable because he wants to change he wants he has a god complex right so unlikable characters can be great but in this context it wasn't for me i do want to say that in this context it wasn't because for some reason she never came to that to that reflect to like that reflection like it didn't seem to bother her of anything or, or anything like that so i i just kind of i don't know i found myself just being annoyed uh let's talk about the miscommunication trope uh really quickly i do think that this book is a great example as to why readers tend to hate the miscommunication trope and the the fact is and i've mentioned it before and i'll mention it again the miscommunication trope is cheap okay it is a cheap way to manipulate your readers so it's you get them to turn the pages but you do so in a, a very cheap way it's too contrived as i mentioned in the video it is too plot convenient so it, it just it just feels like the cheapest way to manipulate your reader's emotion so and the other thing is that i'll say i'll say this the other thing is this if your story can be resolved with a conversation like like a 20 minute conversation then it it's very boring I, I, it's 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 very it's a very boring kind of plot but also it's like if you cannot write a plot where there is good communication and like you think you can't write it then that 
makes me wonder about your skill as a writer. Because if you have to depend on miscommunication being the driving force between your love interests, it genuinely makes me question and it makes me doubt your skill as an author as to how you're able to tell a story. And the reason I say this is because it, it is possible to write a romance with good communication. I mean, I recently read Icebreaker and that was wonderful. I also recently read um, The Long Game by uh, Elena Armas. And there is miscommunication there for some time. But once that happens, there's an apology and then there's actual communication. So it can be written. It can be written. So when it when it doesn't happen and when it is such an easy way to solve your story and I can look at it and be like, this is like really, e this is like the really easy way to solve the story. And like it can be solved by a conversation. When a story feels like that, it definitely makes me question the skill of the author to tell a story that is compelling. Um, so then again, I think I mentioned it in another video. I don't know when that might be coming out. But category romances are kind of like soap operas, but in book form. So they follow the soap opera formula like to the letter. And because of that, it's just really easy to like, for, for them to fall into the same kinds of tropes. Soap operas has have a lot of miscommunication, especially the Spanish ones. There's miscommunication. The only thing that doesn't happen in a lot of these, it's like there's like a weird, like a, 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 a there's like a, 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 a strange like person that you end up marrying that's probably the villain for the most part. And like, there's like a, I don't love this person, but this person loves me. But like the other person I, I, I love is in this other thing and she doesn't want to see me or whatever. But the miscommunication in the soap operas are usually more uh, more exaggerated than they are in category romances at the very least. But it's 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 definitely something to 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 note. They're very similar in nature. Um, and and I guess like they have that. The only difference, I guess, is that there's not a lot of slapping like there is in soap operas. And I think I will appreciate that. But they follow the basic formula of a soap opera to the letter. And while I think that's fun and it can tell a good story, I, I don't think most of the I think most of the category romances I read don't have that um, that technique down the way that soap operas do soap operas have a technique to get you engaged and they have a technique to get you uh, to get you to like appreciate the, the development of the characters and even the miscommunication and all the drama but category romances at least the ones i have read do not have that skill or at least the writers do not have that skill so uh that is that thing and friends to lovers listen i stand by what i say if you're that close, I want to know what would what would keep. I, I just don't understand why the miscommunication is there when it comes to your feelings. I, I I don't think it makes sense in 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 the way that it that those things are written. And I also want to clarify, uh, his until midnight is still much much worse than this book. Much worse. I would reread. I would reread the perfect fake date, but I will not put myself through the hell of his until midnight i would not i refuse i i have i have self-respect and i will not go there again <laughs> i know how i sound okay i know how i sound but no yeah that's the thing uh so for me the friends to lovers trope is one that i really like but it's also one that i think is just not done justice because all that you have is is friends who fall in love for one reason or another and then there's like this weird miscommunication that just goes but i don't want to be my friendship and this and that or whatever and they don't like me that way and it is boring it's boring it is overdone and it just becomes so contrived that it's it, it makes friends to lovers a trope that i don't want to read anymore i wrote a best friends to lovers romance and i'm currently in the edits right now and i'm kind of glad i don't do this because it makes it, it would make it my nightmare. There are like hints of a little miscommunication, but not to the point of this book. For the most part, my book is free from miscommunication. It's very heavily in communication, like very heavy. There's a heavy emphasis on communication. And even in the hints of miscommunication, it's like it gets resolved right away. 
and that's what I like about what I wrote. But this one, but when when miscommunication takes over the entire story, and combined with other tropes, it makes me not want to read those other tropes because miscommunication somehow finds its ugly head in. It like rears its ugly head and it finds its way into a story that has a good concept. So yeah, Th that's my uh, my little rant. But let me know your thoughts on everything I have said in the comment section because I think it's it's one of those things that I'm very curious as to what you think about it. And I want to know other readers' opinions, especially if you read romance. Um, I will say, uh, fantasy romance does contain a good amount of miscommunication as well. But honestly, I'm usually less annoyed when I read fantasy romance or romanticy that has a bunch of miscommunication. And that's usually because um, I have other things to focus on that aren't the romance. So usually in a fantasy romance or a romanticy, there's always like other plot lines that are also uh, happening side by side with the romance. But in a contemporary romance or in a category romance, the plot lines are kind of sacrificed. So everything is just the romance. So it's easier not to notice the miscommunication in a fantasy romance for me because I have other more important things to focus on. Um, other character development stuff, other plot lines. So it's much easier for me not to notice it. But it, when I read a category romance, oh, it's really noticeable. So those are my thoughts on that. I'm, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I, I spark good discussion in this. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing, turning on notifications, and um, and uh, commenting so that you kind of know. Uh, so that yeah, so that, so that uh, I'll respond if you comment. By the way, if um, I'll respond if I can if I find some some kind of reply to give you definitely. But make sure to bring the bell for notifications and subscribe so you're aware when I upload. Please remember, shorts are every day. So if you like shorts, so far I've been able to keep a schedule and shorts are something I am posting every day, at least one. And I'm having a great time um, having those in. Um, so definitely uh, with that. Also, I'm about to meet my goal of the year of making it to 60 subscribers and I'm very proud. Thank you so much for all your support. If you want to see more content from me, you can find my website in the description and subscribe to my blog. By the way, let me know. Did you, did you, do you like my new channel banner? It has my website and everything. Uh, my um, cover designer made it for me. It was great. Um, so I have the so yes i have that so subscribe to my to my blog if you want to see some of my writing if you want to um if you want to um support me you can support me on ko-fi by either simply donating or you can check out my book that is it's available in my shop as well as other retailers but it definitely is also available in my shop i plan to uh do a sale soon um I will uh, ho announce it in the community post when the sale goes live uh, and give you links. Um, I plan to do a 99 cent sale uh, for the ebook and I think the book will be at, the audiobook will be 3.99. So uh, I will keep uh, keep an eye out for that announcement in the next few days. Um, and you can also hire me for services. So if you like the if you like my uh, my reviews, I do have beta reading. Uh, currently, I put reviews. Uh, I don't have com reviews for commission right now. I, I put it on draft. I want to redo that commission. I do have beta reading though available. So if you are an unpublished author and you would like a critique of your book, um, you can absolutely hire me. I'm more than happy to read your manuscript and give you my thoughts as a reader. Um, and if you are working on a visual project and you would like audio description, I do have a commission to critique your audio description. Um, so that is very much fun for me. Um, but anyway, those are all the things if you want to support me. And thank you so much for watching again. And until next time, consume stories. Bye.